Hello, um, Ben and Kathy Manning here. Um, we have five kids from 20 to 3 that we're trying to keep on the straight and narrow during all this craziness. So um, we thought we'd let you guys in on kind of what we're doing, um, what's worked for us, and uh, as far as discipling our kids and more specifically discipling them while we are not interacting with other people. And the good news about quarantine is we've got lots of time to do so. So a disciple by definition is actually a student. And so really start at the ground level of your home. Like what is being modeled? What's it look like? Because what goes on really when things are unsaid is from what they learn, you know, in terms of anything about the way you make meals, the way you run your house, laundry to Jesus. So um, ask yourself, like, what do we believe about Jesus in general? For us, like, we, we know that we don't know it all, um, and that we'll never know it all. And, um, but what we try to do is seize every opportunity that we can um, uh, show Jesus to our kids um, and kind of teach them what the Holy Spirit's doing, um, not only in them, but also in us, you mm -hmm. know, that vulnerability um, to, to be able to humble ourselves to tell them stuff that maybe we don't want to. And this kind of is a fire hose approach just because we're giving you all of the things we do. So take it with a grain of salt. But like every day we start off with um, what we call first five, which is only remarkable. Like we have only remarkable to note is the talking. The only remarkable thing to note is the waking up to talk to Jesus thing. Yes, we want them to make their beds, get dressed, brush their teeth, etc. And that can look different in your home. But just recognizing that, hey, I start my day every day by asking for help or laying down my will or... Um, however, also there's resources. You can find these anywhere. We just found this on iMom, but like ways to pray. So for the younger ones, typically they're like, Lord, thank you for today. Or please forgive me for hitting my brother. And for the older ones, I can say, do you want help? Like, do you want to pray for today? Or do you want to pray the armor? We also have a picture of a knight. So just thinking about what's age appropriate for them to actually apply waking up and meeting with God first thing. One thing we do every day is um, each one of the kids, uh, we rotate them. Uh, they, they're special helpers, what we call it. Um, and with that, they they that's that they are a special helper. They help us um, clean up dinner, that sort of thing. But they also are going to lead prayer. And so when we sit down to eat, which we usually, at least one meal a day, we eat together as a family. Um, usually dinner. Sometimes I don't have to leave so early and I can have breakfast with them. Mm -hmm. um, but they're going to lead prayer. Um, and, and, you know, like for Becca, who's three, it's, um, it, it's, it's funny, um, <laughs> cause it's real short and it's usually pretty funny. It's, it's something like, you know, thanks for making me Spider-Man or something like that. <laughs> so it's, it, it doesn't have to be crazy, but that's, um, we do, we do that with our kids and it, it puts them, um, kind of gives them an opportunity to do things the way they want to. Also, it helps hold us accountable that we do a study every morning at breakfast. This one is one we actually recommend. We wouldn't tell you anything if we didn't actually use it. And it's just like a page, and it's a story and questions, and they're like legit lessons. Like right now, this is First Samuel to Malachi, so it's stories that like I haven't even really uncovered. And the point is, for me, that they help hold me accountable, so they'll ask for it every morning. And so, you know, it was getting to a rhythm where like I was talking them in at bedtime and thinking like, did I even teach them anything out of the Bible today? And that's one way that's just assured that they help. We're already all together and we have a book we work from. And, and for those times, you know, like that they just, you just need to kind of, you know, yeah. slide into the side. Uh, you know, TV is some, is kind of a, we, uh, we try not to do too much TV, but it, you know, it's, it's useful in some regard. Um, but what we do is is we we utilize right now media, which is is a, a resource that we we use, um, and uh, some of the shows we we really like um, allegories, um, what is a Christian, anything by Phil Vischer, um, Superbook, uh, Worship Seeds, they they really um, they're filling the kids with with better stuff than um, what. Cohen really wants to watch his Power Rangers. Yes. Um, so. And then with prayer, that's one that, you know, remember discipleship is just modeling. 
Um, so model as often as you can. And sometimes this is intimidating, I think, to us as parents, but there's a couple like trigger things that help us remember to. So like when we hear sirens, we pray for um, the people that are in the truck or the van or whoever, you know, the people are rescuing the emergency workers. Um, when I receive a text from a group thread of like, can you please pray for my family member? I try to do it out loud just to illustrate that mom's praying too. Um, there's even times where like, we'll leave the park, let's just say, and we just did a great job. We got in the car, there's a lot of joy spurred and I just feel overwhelmed with it. And so I'm like, hey guys, I'm just gonna thank God right now for the time we got together. And so again, it's kind of developing the habits. Um, at nighttime, a way that we've modeled like the way that a good way to talk to the Father is an acronym ACTS, so it's ACTS. A is adoration, so I asked even the three-year-old, like, hey, what's something that you wanna say, wow, God, about, and about anything? It can be the mountains, it can be the ocean, it can be um, their dad, their dad. <laughs> confession, Lord, I need help, you know, or I hit my brother today, or whatever, T is Thanksgiving. So it's different than adoration the way I like, thank you for this, which, you know, you can practice that a lot to the dinner table. What do you want to say thank you for, Dad? S, supplication. God, what do I need help with? I need help being kind tomorrow. I need help. And you can help them with this, but also it's not a shame session. Like, remember, it's about their relationship with the Father. So even if it is about an imaginary character, it's about developing the habit of talking to their Father. Um, we also, um, not every night, but uh, a lot of nights, we'll put a CD on uh, for the kids when they're going to bed. And uh, um, between all the skipping um, that happens, <laughs> uh, they do get some good content. Um, we uh, use an Awana CD that we have, um, and they really like it. They, they like the stories, um, and they actually, it actually really, really helps them memorize scripture. They, they wake up with um, knowing versus frontwards and backwards and it's yeah. um it's helpful um again not to just give you a ton of information for like resources but for our eight and nine year old right so like there's books this is what about me so they'll be reading and then they can um journal about it lettering for the lord so this would be like for quiet time you know like there's just things that you can get to fill in the gaps and these are all things we use that are age appropriate for our kids and so think about these when you're just, you know, considering how to spend time. The same is true for older kids, like teenage girls. Um, this is a women of faith study guide, seamless. I've done this study for the adult three separate times. It's unbelievable. It walks you Genesis through Revelation. So just keep in mind, like, there's resources that you can use um, on the daily. There's even we use for education tactics. Like, this is writing. Um, so it takes you through capitalization and punctuation and yet yeah, scripture and the same is true for like right now as you're educating your older children so we're talking about science so we're talking about history integrate into those conversations like well, what do you think you know like if we're talking about evolution how do you think that fits into the narrative of what God teaches us from the Bible or historically isn't it interesting that George Washington instituted this into you know like talking to them about how the Bible can apply all across the board and then most importantly not forcing it on them, but rather like, well, dad and I believe this because this is what the Bible teaches because we've had a long journey with testing the Bible out <clears throat> and that's where we stand. So where do you stand instead of forcing it down upon them? Um, another thing that we have been doing um, for, I don't know, six months or so mm -hmm. um, is uh, observing the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. um, we, we got kind of a bug from uh, listening to a series podcast from Bridgetown Church in uh, Seattle, mm -hmm. and uh, we've we've really um, stuck to uh, the Sabbath. And um, I don't work on Sundays. Uh, nobody works on Sundays, um, which is uh, it's a challenge because um, you have a really busy Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, we try not to do anything um, too much. I mean, we'll go see family or do something like that. But um, what we what we're trying to teach them is is. Um, it was important to God. It made it in the Ten Commandments. It, it needs to be important to us. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we try to teach them what it means. Um, it's rest, rest and worship. So we have candles that we light at, at meals, and, and whoever um, is a special helper, they get to light those. And um, we basically teach them every Sunday what it means to Sabbath. Um, mm -hmm. And it's actually their favorite day of the week. They, yeah. 
they wait because they don't have to make their bed they don't have to do their normal stuff and so they're, they're super excited about it yes and one of the last things i just want to share that like we integrate into the daily is you know recognizing that we are in the world i mean and we will be until we get called home but we're not of the world and so there's conversations that quite naturally will come up and i think that I'll give you an example. So we're at Target and the dude checking us out is wearing makeup. So my five-year-old's like, why is that guy wearing makeup? And you know, it's like the loudest he's talked the whole time he's in Target. And so the first thing that ignites in you is fear. And I'm not trying to say that I know where you are, but I think that's typical for us as mom and dads is we're like, I'm afraid of how this will hurt them. And I'm afraid of what to say right now. And really I'm just like, shh, like we'll talk about it later. And the bottom line is like, that's how we model the gospel. Um, the same is true for like, I let my girls listen to my kids. We listen to secular music also in addition to worship. But so we'll hear stuff about, you know, Taylor Swift talking about falling in love for the 49th time. And I can talk to them about like, what's God's design for love kids? Like, and then they will go down the road of like, oh, Taylor Swift doesn't know Jesus. And it's like, no, that's not what mom's saying. Mom's saying that God has a design for our love life. And when we check in with him, we don't have to endure as much pain as the world will. And if Taylor Swift's making those choices or the dude at Target, like we love people more than we love their choices. And that's just a really quick narrative, obviously, but to say you can use everything. Another silly one, but like my neighbor, you know, she'll say, oh my God, in front of my kids. And my kids want to say something like, oh, we don't say, oh my God. And I can say in front of my neighbor, like we love her more than we love what she says. Let your our neighbor speak the way she wants to because... Ultimately, it doesn't boil down to what we think or say of them. So again, just using every opportunity to model the gospel. Um, we ask them a lot of questions, um, even when we don't know the answer. So if it's something we're struggling with, um, we'll kind of throw it out there and ask them. And, and it's remarkable um, how sometimes they can come up with a pretty solid solution or, mm -hmm. or, or explanation. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, uh, the other direction is... We try not to be know-it-alls. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't. We try not to give them the answer, um, but we more ask uh, leading questions so that they can come up with their own conclusion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's totally whacked. It's not right. It's wrong. It's. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it helps them understand the way, the pathway to trying to figure out what this all means, and and then we can reference it, you know, to scripture, and then show them, you know, I I understand what you what you're thinking here, and I probably would too if I mm -hmm. didn't know this and so yeah it's just a good way to touch back to uh, the Bible but if we just sit there and tell them what everything and, and, they, and just want them to memorize I mean they're not robots so right. uh, they need to be able to discover all that on their own I um, combined two points so you get to go ahead oh sweet um, uh, so ultimately what I think what works for us is not all this stuff um, all these steps, all these, you know, I mean, I think, I think we, we do, a, I, I feel like we do a lot and, and it's not, um, I, I would, I would even say that it's some of it, um, it's all awesome stuff, but it's not all necessary. Um, but I think one of the biggest things is, is we try to integrate, um, what we believe in, um, in how God's moving us. We try to integrate it into everything. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's it's simple things. It's not. I mean, I'm not one to make things complicated. Like I I um, I just don't like that. I don't like tasks. Um, and so we try to integrate um, all of this just into their days. You know, in in um, in, in in fluid ways. Not not weird. You know, where it's like okay, we're gonna stop and we're all gonna memorize a verse. Right. It, it just doesn't it doesn't play out the same way and and especially if you if we're trying to cram you know cram for a test you know it's oh we're going to church or going to Awana we need to we need to learn all this like right. it just doesn't work and and so what we've found is is just keeping it front and present and and um and just uh, constantly um putting it into our our mouth and into our actions and that, that our kids just eat it up they, they they learn from what we're doing and not then, what we're saying lastly and most importantly and also when all else fails just remember to be praying for them um pray for their character pray for who you want them to become pray for what god's at work doing in them 
So we're just going to say a quick prayer for all of us right now during this pandemic, and we hope that you feel blessed and more um, enriched by the way we do things at our house. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just praise you and thank you for letting us um, disciple these kids. Father, I praise you for your hand of protection during this pandemic, and I just praise you for the opportunity for us to model your love and your life to them while we have the opportunity. So help us to do it well, and please forgive us on the daily when we don't. We love you. Thank you for dying. Amen. Amen.